going on everybody? Cody from Motorcycle MD. Welcome back to another video on helpful motorcycle repair and techniques. This quick kind of short tip or trick technique that I want to show you guys in this video I think can speak to many different people when it comes to repairing their own motorcycle on the topic of electrical issues. I don't care if it's switch issues, ignition, starting system, charging system, it doesn't matter. Any electrical component, sensor, switch, whatever that has something that can be unplugged relates specifically to this technique. Now, if you are human and you make mistakes when it comes to repairing things, wrong diagnosis or anything when it comes to your motorcycle, I think it's safe to say that many of us, even including me, have spent money replacing a part that the bike may not have needed. Why that is, there's many different answers to that. Whether it's a lack of knowledge, lack of tools, lack of instruction when it comes to testing that part and knowing that it's bad versus just, ah, it's only this much money and it has to be that. Problem, ECU, coil, sensor. So in this video, I wanna take a second to show you guys a technique that I've learned and that has worked and continues to work countless times when it comes to fixing an electrical problem that is intermittent or not working at all. Instead of the first thought process that you take being, okay, my horn doesn't work or my tachometer is not working or my neutral light won't come on. Let's look and see how much that part is. That electrical component, let's look how much that is so I can kind of weigh my options as to what is the first thing I'm gonna do, replace it or actually just check to see if there's something else wrong. The point of this video is to stop that shotgun approach that many of us take and show you guys a way more logical and kind of common sense way to just solve the issue before the money is spent. If any of you out there do want to learn how to repair and maintenance and get helpful tips and tricks when it comes to repairing your motorcycle, doing the basic maintenance that you need that you can do instantly, there is a free course in the description that gives you a bunch of videos on how to do it. Me and my buddy Matt from How To Motorcycle Repair put it together for you and it's totally free. It's a course, sign up, take it, use it. And if you need more in-depth help with your motorcycle repair or maintenance, whatever you're trying to do to it, be sure to join the mailing list below. There's ways to contact me and even get involved in a community of riders who love helping and sharing their jobs and progress over on our private Facebook page. If you want to hear more information about that, check out the description. So everybody hates electrical. I get it. You can't see it. The components are usually expensive. How that signal speaks to that signal and is working fine, but then that signal to that signal is not can feel very much over our heads a lot of times. But what if I told you that in my experience of working on motorcycles at a dealership for 12 plus years has taught me that in most cases, electrical problems are very simple. Even though at the very top of every electrical diagnosing troubleshooting section of a Honda manual, they state the very first sentence, most electrical issues are caused by a loose or poor connection. We seem to bypass that and want to dig in further into the meteor stuff or the things that we kind of can't explain, like a sensor going bad, it losing resistance, it gaining too much resistance, and the list goes on. But there's a very easy technique that you can use when it comes to connectors and terminals and those connections for those electrical components that will help you out when it comes to making sure that it's not the actual sensor's problem. Now, there are many cases where components go bad, ECUs go bad. Sensors overheat, they get worn out, whatever. But it is way more likely for that not to be the case and it actually be an issue with the wiring or the connection. Which makes me think about how many times in the field of motorcycle repair has a component or electrical sensor or something have been replaced it fixes the problem, but really it wasn't the sensor's fault. Actually, it was just the connection that went to it. Not everything is easy to see, but everything wears out on a motorcycle eventually. And we can chalk it up to many people just not knowing what a bad this looks like or how that terminal or connection should feel when I unplug it. Those are things that we gain through experience and trial and error and unfortunately money spent. Now this video may seem very talking headish when it comes to electrical components, but there is a common sense thought process when it comes to this kind of stuff. When people screw with bikes, when they take things off and plug things in and undo and redo, modify that, shorten it, this manufacturer may not know what they're talking about having this sensor here when it can go here. All of those things can cause problems down the road, burnt connections high resistance in a connection, loose wiring, a loose connection inside of a block of terminals. So what I wanna do is just show you guys a very, very quick technique when it comes to making sure that the connection is making a connection. And I would suggest doing this on any diagnosis that you do with a system that you think is faulty. So I wanna give you guys two examples, one with just a terminal setup and then one on the bike that I think is powerful enough to save people lots of money, lots of time and lots of effort when it comes to fixing your bike's problem. Now, harness, connection. Blade terminals, bullet connectors, I don't care what it is. 
I don't care if it has a multi-pin connection like this, two pin like this, they all need a good connection. That is the fundamental of a system working properly. So inside of, let's say, a blade fuse, this is oftentimes with stators, with regulator rectifiers, with ignition switches. Inside one end, you'll have a female section, which is comprised of a component that is receiving a, what we would call a male terminal. Make sense? Perfect. So when this gets unplugged and replugged in, let's say, 300 times, 20 times, 10 times in its life, the way that this connection works will eventually begin to wear out. As you can see, this is kind of shaped like a W. This is a flat blade, and it slides in, okay? Oftentimes, there's a little hook on the inside that helps keep this thing nice and tight when you plug this thing in for the first time. But what happens is, even though that this connection, let's say we plug it in and it makes a nice snap, and the hooked arm goes in and we're all good, everyone's happy. That connection is good. I know what it is, I checked it. But what's going on inside of it is what matters. The same type of connection that snaps, pops, clicks in towards itself and you think it's a tight connection can still have a terminal that is more like this. It falls in and out with no problem. Looks good, plugs in nice and clean, but in the electrical world and sensors and voltage and amperages, this is an awful connection. It will melt connectors, open circuits, cause things not to work, keynote, and obviously needs to be addressed. Now, you could, if you wanted to, there is a way that you can stick a little tiny tool down in the mouth of this thing, unclip where it locks into the connector out, pull it out, take your pliers, go to the W, tighten the W, push it back in, hope that it's a great staying connection is not going to plop its way back out, which is not always easy, and plug the connector back in and carry on your merry way. Or, what you can do is think logically about how this connection needs to work. It needs to make constant contact with what it's going into. Okay, so what I mean by that is if we were to take the receiving end, let's say it's a male end, this is a three terminal, three wire connector, and we have three straight blades. They look good, they're not bent, broken, not corroded from what I can tell. And like I said, when we plug them into where they need to go, it just snaps in. It's great, it works. But you wouldn't believe the amount of times by simply unplugging a connector, plugging it back in makes a difference in either a signal, a resistance reading, a voltage reading, a amperage reading has solved the problem. Maybe it's not a long-term solution by just unplugging and replugging and everything's fine. It may fail again eventually or sooner than what you would hope, but that simple unplug and plug back in changes that connection. But if you were to unplug this connector and your desire is to make this connection better, or you wanted to verify that it is making a good connection and that it's not the component it's attached to, all you need to do is look inside, look at those three blade terminals, take a pair of needle nose pliers, and you can go in with the system, obviously you're not running hot power to this thing, grab onto that male connector and just give it a slight twist. I'm not trying to spin it around 360 degrees, all we're doing is putting a little twist in these terminals. What it does for these blade style terminals is when you go to slide that once flat male connection into that female receiving end, it's no longer going to be flat. Now we have taken it and kind of turned it a little bit to the right. So when it goes in with a little bit more pressure, it will go in, but now it's making a more direct connection. It's sliding into that same terminal and holding in there much tighter because of the drag on its way in. Now, if you take that terminal and go like this, it's not going to go in and you'll ultimately probably break something. So keep in mind that we're not trying to take that terminal and twist it as much as we can and put a nice little braid in that male terminal. You'll break it 100%. All we're doing is a slight degree off. So when it goes in, we are ensuring that at least one side of this flat blade terminal is making a connection in. That's simply put all I needed to say. Honda was not stupid, or manufacturers in general are not stupid by putting at the top of their troubleshooting list, most electrical problems can be found at a poor or loose connection, or a bad ground. Now, when it comes to bullet style connectors that have that round cylindrical style connection, these should be tight to pull in and out. Oftentimes, a thousand times of you putting brand new LED turn signals and headlights on your bike, this will eventually not be as tight as it once was, okay? What you can do is you can take these, the female end because it's hooked kind of like this. It has an open edge on it. When that terminal slides into it, it opens it up a little bit, but it, there's tension on it to grab onto that terminal. If you take this with a pair of pliers on both sides of my hands and just simply close it, there's a chance that you will tighten that connection up. And if you look down inside and you can actually see what you're doing, you have a nice little grab with your pliers, you can take this and now you've made that connection a lot tighter. It becomes a lot more difficult when you're dealing with a lot of these or like a or a nine pin or a 16 pin connector 
but it doesn't matter because they're all doing the, ultimately the same thing. Now, if you go inside of that connector and start jacking up every one of those terminals and you go to plug this thing back in and you cannot get it to plug in, you've overdone it. The key things that I would focus on if you were going after a multi-pin connector like this or like a right handle assembly switch where that has turn signals, horn, kill switch, on off, has 10 wires coming out of it. Focus on the ground wires and focus on the power wire that you, maybe you have found in the schematic that powers that switch or is supposed to be going through that switch. Focus on those wires. Don't do all of them and expect a Hail Mary to be caught when you plug that thing back in. But it is a fantastic technique that I've used a thousand times and that was taught to me. Now when it comes to a component such as like the ECU, a way more involved system, you don't want to be screwing around with this and make a mistake, obviously. Before I even unplug this, make sure that you guys are unplugging your battery, positive or negative before you start unplugging big components like these. Small spikes or if you have a clock or something that is getting power all the time and you pull this out, you could create a small spike in what signal is being sent and you could ultimately damage the ECU. It says it right there in the manual. But unplugging this, you'll find that it is not, it doesn't really look like anything that you might have seen before. You can't really dig into those and you definitely don't wanna dig into this. There are tiny, tiny connections that are kind of in the shape of a needle that are going into a female end that is receiving it. They have to be straight. They have to be perfect to make that connection good. Otherwise, you're breaking them all off. Sometimes on ECUs, you unplug them and in the component side, you'll find just spikes just staring at you right in the face of all of those little small metal connections that need to plug into the harness. But there's a different tool for this type of stuff. I wouldn't suggest at all going in there with a needle nose pliers and start spinning these things because you will snap them right off and ultimately need a new harness. Now I made a mistake of leaving the tool that I want to talk to you guys about at work where I was using it, but we call them pin fit tools. It's like a key ring comprised of all of the male style ends that you can take and manually insert them into connections to feel how tight the connection is being. It's a very, very helpful tool. Honda has a special tool for all of their connectors. You can go on Amazon or whatever and find generic ones that may fit yours. Depending on the manufacturer, I would try to lean closer towards what the manufacturer provides for their terminals and not just some generic Ford Toyota Universal pin fit tool. But it's an awesome tool that you can just pin in and out of each of these terminals to verify that that connection is good. It has the same male end that should be going in there and you can test it manually to feel a very loose connection. And they do also make tools that allow you to remove these types of terminals, but that's a entirely different video and job when it comes to trying to fix a connection that tiny for that component. But it happens. Motorcycles move, they vibrate, they shake, they go through weather. They have customers who like to tear them apart and put them back together, which we can say all of those topics are the downfall to motorcycle connections. But that's it, everybody. Got that's it guys i mean very simple trick very simple i probably could explain it in 10 seconds but without explanation of why and when and where i don't want you guys getting into too much trouble so that being said again if you want more help with your motorcycle repair maintenance tips tricks like these in the description below is a course that i want you to have it's free and while you're there you can join the mailing list get notifications when new videos come out and if you're new to the channel welcome like share subscribe if you like the content and want to see more until next time cody from motorcycle md Bringing you guys some quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. See you next time. Later.